in not allowing us freedom to ride. It's so important that disabled people have the right to turn up and go. Requiring them to book 24 hours in advance is just fundamentally discrimination. I want to be able to say to my grandson, who calls me up of an evening and says, I'm doing something at school tomorrow, Nanny, can you come? Yes, I can. Now I can't, because with one less than an evening's notice, I haven't got time to let Southern Rail know that I want to travel, just because I happen to be in a wheelchair and I need a ramp to get me on a train. Many of our members have been left on the train because nobody is at the station to get them off. Guards should be trained to put ramps down if there is no one to get them off. We've been fighting and our guards have been fighting on Southern to keep the conductors on the trains. It's the same thing that's happening on Mersey Rail and on Northern Rail. Again, the Department for Transport behind it. They've said, and it's published in reports, their ultimate aim is to remove guards from trains across the national rail network, and that is what we're opposing. The Southern is just the first step in that, and that's why we're, we've taken strike action on Southern and on Mersey Rail and on Northern to maintain the guards on the trains. It's an absolute scandal that your needs have been disregarded by the man who works in here, Mr. Grayley. So I bring, I bring to you solidarity and also bring to you gratitude for all the support that you provided for the RMD during our struggle. And I'm just here today to tell you that as long as your struggle continues, the RMT will be here to help you as well. The Rail Delivery Authority report decided that access was essential for confidence for disabled and older travellers that it was economically beneficial. The DFT denied it and buried it for one simple reason. They want to deny us access to transport because their friends' profit comes before our right to travel. This nearly 4,000 signatures has come in the space of less than a month. Accessible public transport requires there to be a safety critical guard on every single train. Yay! We also recognise that accessible public transport means an open ticket office at every station. Exactly. So we'll also be out campaigning against uh, Greater Anglia's um, announcement that it intends to close all but seven of its 60 plus ticket offices. Someone's coming down. Yeah, what did he say? He's not caring about disabled people leaving us out in the street like this. This is about our safety. This is about our access. We're passengers and we're bloody angry. Open the door. They, they said that someone's come down now. Yeah. Yeah. They've been they saying it for minutes ago. Sorry, that's not on. They don't come in, we're going in. Hello, Hello, this lady. Petition. Fantastic. Hello, guys. Step forward. Out the way. Okay. This is a petition signed by around 4,000 disabled people in Scotland, yeah. explaining that in order to get proper access to the train service, we need to keep guards on trains. Right. And we want the government, instead of telling the train operating companies to get rid of guards, to tell the train operating companies to do the opposite, to keep guards, in order to ensure disabled people's access to the railway. We say no to DOO! 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 Hello, Atos. Guess who's back? Disabled people against cuts. Remember us? In February 2014. We were here for over 35 demonstrations took place over the UK. And that's when the shame that you endured, the absolutely unfit for purpose work capability assessment, you lost that contract. We drove you out. Well now, we're here to talk about personal independence payments. This is the contract that Atos still have. From October 2015 to date, from the transition from 
disability living allowance to personal independence payments. Over 51,000 disabled people have lost their mobility cars, have lost their power wheelchairs. One in seven claimants scores zero points for PIP assessments. And we know that there are disabled people in mental distress who took their own lives rather than go through another PIP assessment. You hate us saying it, but we're going to say it every day, every week, every month, until we get you out at us kills. Let's make some noise! She's now a grandmother. This lady and 106 more people on that banner are dead. University study found 600 people that are dead. The Department of Work and Pensions will admit to nearly 4,000. But we know there are tens of thousands of people who are dead. And the manner in which some of these people died. Starved to death, some of them hung themselves. Some of them jumped out of windows with their kids because they had no hope. What we've got to do now is call for a mass boycott of all the companies they're linked with. We have got to drive their share prices down. We've got to hit them in the profit margin. <laughs> Oh! Yeah. 